Hi, this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at some more advanced 3D planar tracking skills using this shot from Hollywood Camera Works, where an actress moves in front of the side of a truck that we'd like to track. So our task to start with is going to be to mask out the actress. And there's several different ways to do that. We're going to look at one of them in this particular tutorial. So we're going to wind up using the roto masking features in Synthize to set up this moving mask. To make that easier, we're going to start out with a conventional supervised tracker. It's also possible to use a 2D planar tracker as well. But here we can just let this one tracker quickly run through. It's not really an exact sort of thing that we require here. So with that in place, we're ready just about to start creating our mask. And the first point that you create is actually a nominal center point. And we're going to put that right at that tracker, basically. And now we're going to begin setting up some other points. And I'm not trying to get, you know, a super exact mask out of this. It's just not required for what we're doing here. So I've set that up, and now I'm going to use this Import Tracker to Control Point button. So I selected the tracker, I'm going to click on the control point. You notice there are now a whole bunch of keys created down there. I'll unselect that. Now you see we have a very rough initial version of this tracking through the shot. So now what we're going to be doing is, is fine-tuning this and there's this additional scale and rotate handle out there. And I'm going to use that just to blow this up a bit to maybe possibly make it a little quicker to generate and adjust these points. So now you're just going to have to bear with me a little as I go through the process of tuning these things up. It doesn't make for really very exciting tutorial theater, but it doesn't really take all that terribly long either. Again, I'm just giving it a little margin. Now we'll start moving into the middle of the shot and adjusting it a bit further. And really the parts that we need to focus on are those where the actress is actually blocking the part that we're going to be tracking. And you definitely want to err on the side of being a little on the large side rather than a small side. You'll notice that these are keyed not only in space but in time as well. 
So there is just a little bit of going back and forth through this to get it all tuned up appropriately. So now that we have our mask in place, we're ready to go over to the planar tracking panel and start putting together our planar tracker. And actually the best choice here is to go to the end of the shot where the side of the truck is largest and we can get the best data. And we'll start laying down some corners here. Notice we can't really see that one exactly because of the actress. So we'll adjust that and we'll adjust, in fact, all of them once we get these set up. You can see I'm just using some of the sidelines of the panel here. So I can get something pretty decent. And one of the things you notice already is that the corner of the planar tracker is missing. That's because this garbage mask that we just set up is blocking that corner of it. So we won't get any information from that corner for use as a reference pattern, but uh, fortunately it's relatively small. So now we're ready to start tracking through the shot. Of course we need to go in the other direction. And off we go. You'll see our mask moving in front. You'll see it, any little spots that I've missed show up and right along the side of the actress. So I think that's actually pretty, was pretty good. Now the other thing that I'd like to bring your attention to, there's some little jiggles. If you look up here in the mini tracker view, when you're tracking something, you might see some little jiggles sometimes. And let's think about what's causing that. And if you look over in the main camera view, you'll see that in some spots, the outline of the planar tracker itself is coming right up to the edge of the search rectangle. And the reason for that is that there's a fair amount of bounce in the shot. It's, it's a handheld camera with somebody walking. So the default, you know, steady camera setting, you know, makes a, a fairly tight set of assumptions about how smooth the shot is. And in some of the frames, we're uh, exceeding that. And that's why there's a small bump in the tracked shot. So what can you do about that? One thing to do about it is to increase the size of the search region and run through the shot again. The other thing is to go and take this search rectangle itself and just drag it to a better position. And then when I release that, you'll see that the planar tracker snaps into location. And now as I scrub through that, there's no longer a bounce in that spot. So we've created a key at this location. You can tell that from the red handles here on the search rectangle. And we've just created the key there on the search rectangle, not on the planar tracker itself. As a result, the search rectangle path or the 
planar tracker path itself won't have any bounces in it like it would if we just try and go and manually move the whole tracker around and position it you know inevitably there's going to be a small degree of shift to that but by moving the search rectangle to accommodate the right location then the software is able to do the exact normal search process to get the best solution for where the tracker can go and should go so you know we can go through the the shot and look for places like that and you know as you find things like that you'll see that as up here the uh, outer boundary of the planar tracker is sticking out past the search rectangle and you know a, a little bit of that can be okay some of the time but depending on this particular situation on a particular shot in a particular frame you know it may create a glitch if the search rectangle isn't big enough so again we can just go and correct it and you'll see those glitchy frames just disappear as you do so so that's a, a powerful technique for ensuring that you have smooth paths if you just have a, a shot with a few bounces in it the other thing that we can do you know is to go and increase the size continue tracking the drawback to doing that is that it does take longer if the search rectangle is larger under some circumstances it might mean that the software is able to find something it shouldn't find also especially if you have a repeating pattern like a brick something like that uh, picket fence so you have a couple different options normally getting the, the right idea for the search rec search region size is a good idea and then you can just correct a few frames if that's all that's going on and depending on what the particular situation is if there's a lot of rotation in the pattern here the actress's head is rotating we'll see later you know, to do that the rotation rate from frame to frame might need to be increased now on a shot with something moving closer or further away from the camera the search region frame to frame scaling needs to be larger and again one thing that we should have really set up in the first place is to change the overall tracking mode to handheld because this is really a handheld shot and when we did that it would have used some somewhat larger values for the search region by default when we created the tracker but that wouldn't have let us discover it ourselves during this tutorial so that gives you a, a little checklist of things to look at First, that, that search mode. Second, the size of the search region. Third, the ability to move around the search region itself. And that's always better than actually trying to move the tracker as a whole. So hopefully this has been informative. Take care.